Ok, it is time for a small challenge. We can see we are getting more and more familiar with MSF console and exploitation. And by now, you should be familiar with the entire process of searching for a vulnerability and trying to exploit it. Let's put all of that to the test. So for now, we covered about 4 to 5 vulnerabilities on the Metasploitable virtual machine. And what I want you to do in this video is find 3 different vulnerabilities that will give you a shell back on the target machine. You can use any tools that you want, besides searching for links that will give you the exact steps to exploiting the vulnerability. And feel free to use Google if you want to, to see if a software is vulnerable. You can also use Searchploit to see whether you have exploit in your database. You can use Nmap to scan and Metasploit framework to exploit. After we do this challenge, we are ready to move on to some harder Windows exploits. And after that, we're going to see how to exploit the target without using MSF console and without having an exploit available inside of our Cal Linux machine. Ok, great. So, pause this video right now, give yourself 10 to 20 minutes and try to find 3 different vulnerabilities on the Metasploitable. That will give you a shell back. I myself will do it right now, so if you don't want me to spoil it for you, then try to find them first and then watch this video. The harder part is to find them, however, once you find them, it is easy to exploit them. Let's get straight into it. Let's start by scanning the target for all the open ports and its services. So what I'm going to do is I will perform the usual nmap version scan on my Metasploitable and I will use dash p dash which stands for scan all 65,000 ports. If I press here enter, enter my password and by the way, of course the vulnerabilities that we covered don't count at the moment. We will not pay attention to them at all right now. We want to find new vulnerabilities. So while this scan is working, I will go to a second terminal and I will start the MSF console. And I will also open a third terminal in case we need something like a search exploit or some other tool to run right here. So the goal is to find three vulnerabilities. Let's see after our scan finishes whether we manage to do so. And here are the results of the scan. So we got a bunch of ports open as usual. And let's go and pick any one of them. For example, I know for a fact that this dist C open port, which is 3632, is vulnerable. It is running dist C version 1. And if I go to my Metasploit framework and I just type search dist C, I will only get one exploit available. Dist C execute or daemon command execution. It is ranked excellent. So since this is the only exploit, let's give it a try. I will copy it. I will type use and then paste the exploit name. Clear the screen. We can show info just to know what this exploit does and it says that this module uses a documented security weakness to execute arbitrary commands on any system running dist C CD. And our system is indeed running dist C CD. So what we're going to do is we're going to type show options and set the R hosts to be the IP address of our Metasploitable. Let's see show payloads. So we got quite a few payloads right here. Let us use this one, CMD Unix reverse. So this is reverse TCP over Telnet. Let's set it right here. Since at the moment, if I show options, we don't have any payload set up. Let's set payload CMD. Unix and then reverse. Show options once again. Now we need to set the L host. So I will type sudo ifconfig, enter my password. My IP address is 192.168.1.8. Let's copy it and let's set L host to be equal to that IP address. Now, if we triple check all of our available options, we should be good to go. Let us run our exploit. And here it is. First one is over. We got the command shell session one opened on the target machine. If I type who am I, we're daemon. If I type ls or print working directory, we are in the slash tmp directory. 
hostname command will tell us that we are metasploitable and uname-a will tell us that we are Linux metasploitable 2.6.24 and here we also get some other information such as date and which version of Linux it is. Great. So first one is done. Let us control C this, abort session one, select yes and let's go back to our scan to find another vulnerability. So if you remember, during our scans, once we performed the vulnerability scan, we noticed that this Unreal IRC was vulnerable. We got from some of our scans result that this specific service is vulnerable to some type of the attack. So let's give it a try. Let's go to our search exploit and type search exploit IRC. And this gives us a bunch of different information. So this isn't really useful for us. Let's try it like this. Let's go to our scan and copy Unreal RCD, which is the version. And now if I type search exploit and then the name of the version, well, we narrow it down to four results. And one of them doesn't count since it is remote denial of service. Out of all of this, we got one Ruby exploit, which means it belongs to Metasploit framework. It is for the version 3.2.8 and it is backdoor command execution. Let's search it inside of our Metasploit framework. So search and then Unreal RC. And we do get indeed only one exploit for this. It is ranked excellent and it is from 2010. Let's copy it. Right here, copy selection and as usual use this exploit. Show info will tell us that this module exploits a malicious backdoor that was added to the Unreal RCD 3.2.8 download archive. So as it says, this module will exploit some malicious backdoor that was added in this specific version. And if we show options, we need to set the R hosts as in the previous exploit. And we also need to set the payload, but before we set it, let's show our available payloads first show payloads, pardon me, not show options, and we get the same result as previously, so we're just going to go with the reverse TCP over Telnet. And if I type set payload and then paste the payload name. Now we need to set the L host to be the IP address of our Cal Linux machine, and if we triple check our options, everything is set, type run, and here it is command shell session 2 open. We got the second exploit down. Let's check out if it works. Who am I? We are the root account. Host name will tell us we are metasploitable. So this is the second one down. We got one more left to go. Let's control C this. Go back to our scan. And we are doing this really fast tempo because we already are familiar with all of these tools and techniques that we use to exploit these vulnerable softwares. If you didn't manage to find three different exploits, don't worry, this comes with a practice. So after some time of practicing, you will be able to find even more than three exploits. Let's continue on the third one. So if we go down here and check out what different services we got running, this one which is running over port 8787, running service DRB, I know for a fact that it is vulnerable. So let's give it a try. The service name is DRB. So if I type in my search exploit, DRB, well, we only get a few results right here. And it doesn't seem that any one of them belongs to the Metasploit framework, as we can see right here, since these are Python files. So let's just double check, whoops, not here. Let's just double check right here if we can find something regarding DRB and we do manage to find it. So we got these two exploits, which are for the multi and we got this DRB remote code execution. And it says distributed Ruby remote code execution. And if I go right here under the version, we can see that it is running Ruby. So Let's just give it a try, you never know. If we copy this exploit, which says DRB remote code execution, and we use it right here, 
show our options we can see by default it has set the payload to be cmd unix reverse netcat and we got two different things to set up matter of fact one of them is uri which is not really needed so we can only set our hosts and for some reason it does say that our host is not required but i'm not really sure how it is not required so we will just specify it anyway set our hosts 192.168.1.7 since the payload is already been set let us just run the exploit and here it is we got command shell session 3 open let's type who am i we are root account and once again hostname will tell us we're metasploitable machine and with this we completed our challenge we found three different vulnerabilities that gave us a shell back but these are not the only ones so matter of fact let me just show you one or two more that you could have found if you perform this challenge the one that is a little bit different to exploit is this vnc service running on port 5900 it is running protocol 3.3 and if we just search in the search exploit search vnc oops search exploit vnc we will get a bunch of the results right here so let's add the version 3.3 and we do get some of the responses right here but it does say that these are for Windows. Now, we are not going to give up just because we cannot find the exploit using SearchSploit. Matter of fact, it probably is somewhere right here, just there is a bunch of results and we don't really want to read through all of this to find the exploit that we need. So let's just go straight to the Metasploit and type search VNC. And if I scroll all the way up, since these are just payloads, I come to exploits we can see there are about five or six exploits and these four are for windows so we can forget about them straight away we got this one and we got this one this one seems interesting it is an exploit for multiple operating systems for vnc and it says vnc keyboard execution so let's just copy the name and see whether it works now this is just a part of penetration test. If you don't know an exact exploit, you simply just try a few different ones and see if they work. Just get used to it that some exploits will sometimes not work and you will have no idea why they don't work. So let's just type set or pardon me, let's just type use and then the exploit name. And this seems that it isn't an exploit for us since it is also setting the Windows payload. We cannot find a VNC exploit. So what are we going to do? Well, if I go right here and instead of searching for an exploit, I simply just try to connect to the VNC using a tool called VNC Viewer. And all I need to specify to connect to is the IP address to that target machine. Press enter. Hmm. It seems to be asking for a password. Well, let's try MSF admin which is the usual password for everything in Metasploitable. And it tells us authentication failure. But if we try it once again, and as a password, I simply just type password. Well, it worked. The VNC viewer password was just password. And now I got root shell opened on the Metasploitable. I can execute commands right here, such as ifconfig, such as hostname, ls, and I can see anything that is on the target machine. So this exploit was a little bit different because it was due to a weak password. I just connected to the VNC and I typed password and it granted the access to the root shell of the Metasploitable. Great. To exit this, I can type exit and I can exit this desktop right here. And let me show you just one more and then we are going to end the video. And that one is over port 1099. It is running Java RMI. And if I go in my Metasploit framework and search for Java underscore RMI, well, we get two exploits right here. Let's try with this one first. So exploit multi, misc Java RMI server, copy the exploit name, go right here and type use. 
it will set the default payload to be Java Meterpreter Reverse TCP. Now this is the first time that we are encountering a Meterpreter payload. You will see that it is a little bit different than all the other shells that we got in the previous exploits. So if I type show options, there are a bunch of things that I need to set. Our payload options has already been set to correct one, to the correct IP address and to the correct port. All we need to set right here is the R hosts. You can just leave the server host and server port to be 0.0.0.0 and 8080. If I go right here and type set R hosts, 192.168.1.7, and I run this, well, here it is. We got the interpreter session for open. And if you want to execute the commands, you can just wait for this exploit to finish. And even though it says right here exploit failed, if I type sessions, I will have the interpreter session 4. And I can enter that session by typing sessions and then dash i, and then the id of that session, which in my case is 4. And I've entered the interpreter shell. Right here, the commands are different. To check out all of the commands that we can run with the interpreter, we can type the help command. And you can see it is split into different sections, such as file system commands, such as core commands, and all of these commands work with interpreter shell. We can download and upload files, we can execute a command, we can screen share, we can perform a screenshot of the target machine, we can record the microphone, and many other things that we're going to check out later. But for now, we can use a command called shell to enter the command shell with the target machine. So if I type who am I once again, right now I'm a root account with the IP address of the Metasploitable. Great. Now I left this meterpreter shell for the end, just so we can slowly start getting into using meterpreter shell on our target machine. As we can see, there is a lot of the commands that we can run. Now, in the next video, we're going to start with Windows exploitation. And in Windows exploitation, we're most likely always going to want to open a meterpreter shell. So that would be about it for this challenge. Once again, if you manage to find three different vulnerabilities, congratulations. If not, don't worry, this comes with practice. Now that we covered metasploitable vulnerabilities, which were rather easy, it is time to move on to the Windows vulnerabilities. See you in the next video.